Hey guys, Pedro here to do an album review and today I'm here to talk to you guys about Lordy's new album Sexorcism out on AFM Records, the band's ninth studio album. It has 13 tracks and it's 63 minutes in length. And this album to me is really a grower, not a shower. And what I mean by this is that it took a couple of listens, more than a couple actually, for me to really appreciate what this album is and, and what Lordy is doing with this record. The first couple of times I played the record, I really didn't enjoy it. I thought that outside of the two singles, the album it felt weak. Uh, it felt that it didn't have enough content in there to really uh, be worth more than just those couple of listens. But I, I, I went on and I listened to the album uh, at least three more times after that. And I must say that with every single time that I listened to the album, the album became more and more enjoyable. Songs became more and more enjoyable. So. From that perspective, I really think that this is an album that it all depends on what mindset you go into the into the record. If you're going with the mindset of, of really looking for something new, something fresh, something over the top, something cinematic, then you're listening to the wrong band. You should go listen to Nightwish. If you want to listen to Lordy and listen for what they are, which is a hard rock band, to me in this album, they also have a lot of power metal influences into it. And if you like cheese, this album is dripped in cheesiness. It's absolutely pure cheese from the album cover to the name of the album, to the song titles, to the lyrics. But that's what Lordy is all about. It's all about making fun of stuff, combining horror, uh, movie horror, if you will, with sexual content, sexual innuendos, and how those two worlds really come together in a funny and comedian way. Like the, the album, it's really lighthearted from that perspective. But it's funny, if you pay attention to the lyrics, the lyrics are funny, there's there's funny innuendos into the songs, there's there's funny play on words in the songs. And then those songs also have funny titles, like, like for example, Hell Has No Room and Romeo Ate Juliet, which could be taken in two separate uh, contexts there, if you, know, if you know what I mean. So like I said, so they really play well on words, they really play well with sexual innuendos, and, and then they incorporate that into the whole overall uh, horror theme. So I really like what they've done. Overall, this is a, this is a good album. I enjoy it. I enjoy the fact that it's very lighthearted. It's one of those that you just sit back, listen to it, have a laugh. And it's nothing more than that. If you're expecting something really, really complicated, really complex, and you're not getting that. And, and, that's, and that's what I go back to as far as the mindset going into the record. Because that mindset of the listener is really going to determine your level of enjoyment of this album. If you go with a clean line, not expecting uh, a lot, and just really going in saying, okay, I'm gonna listen to this album, I'm gonna enjoy myself, I know what it's about, I know they're making fun of stuff, I know they're, they have these play on words, I know there's a lot of sexual content, sexual innuendos, and this is what I'm gonna listen to, I think you're truly gonna enjoy the album. Because there's still enough from a musical perspective to really enjoy the music. This album doesn't live only off of the lyrics and the funny names of songs like Polter Christ and Remskin Assassin, which by the way is my favorite song of the album. So, you know, there's more to it. There is some quality uh, musicianship on this album. There is quality music with this album, but sometimes that's kind of forgotten based on the lyrical content, on, on the nature of the music, and, and on, on the song choices in terms of the song title choices. So sometimes the quality of the musicianship gets lost a little bit in there. But I think it's important that you listen to this album with an open mind and you're really going to enjoy it. I believe you're really going to enjoy the album because there's enough of both worlds there to really keep your focus and keep you interested in the record. Now, as far as favorite songs, I must start with the first single that came out, Your Tongue's Got Your Cats. I really like that song. I find it very catchy. It has a really cool bass line. The bass really comes through in that song and, and it really sets the tone of that song and it sets like a darker tone to the song. And, and, and it was the first single, was the song that introduced me to the album. It's earlier on in the album as well. So it is really a catchy song. It is a really cool, hooky song. And I think to me, it's one of those songs that after you listen to the album, you're really gonna find yourself singing the chorus over and over again. And it's one of the more contagious songs of the album, if you will. One of my favorites by far. Another one is Polter Christ. Polter Christ is really cool. I like what they did with this song based on the theme of the song. Based on the lyrics of the song, I really like how they started with the female vocals. Almost like a humming, if you will. A very ominous and dark 
disturbing, uh, almost sexual humming at the beginning of the song. I, I, I really like that because it really set the tone for what's going to be the song. And it really fit well, not only with the name of the song, but with the lyrical content of the song. So I really like that start of the song. I also really like the melodic and catchiness of the chorus. I like the fact that they incorporated a little bit of a choir in the chorus. That gave the chorus a lot more thickness, a lot more layers. It made the choir, the choir story, made the chorus more energetic, more alive, and it really added to the whole overall story that they're telling you with the lyrics in this song. So I really like the dynamic of starting with that female um, humming, if you will. Um, and then adding the chorus, uh, the, the, the choir to the chorus. Those two components to me uh, add a lot of uh, layers to the song and it gives the song enough melody in the right spot. Also the keyboards in this song are really cool and, and the guitar melody itself. It, it's also one of the heavier songs. They have some more light-hearted songs if you will. This is one that really employs a little bit more of a, of a heavy guitar riff and I really like it because it also matches well with the story that they're trying to tell you with their lyrics. Now, my overall favorite song of, of the album, and I, honestly, I cannot get enough of this song. I have the freaking Rimskin, Rimskin, Assassin, Rimskin. I, I got that shit stuck into my brain. It's, it's unbelievable. I, I love this song. First of all, I, I love the name title of the song. Second, I love the lyrics of the song. Third, I love the chorus. One of the catchiest, hookiest chorus. Rimskin, Assassin going in. I mean, that, that line there alone, this song is going to be one of those that I really hope the third video they release for this album will be for Rimskin Assassin. I think this is one of the better songs of the album. It really combines the horror aspect of the lyrics with the sexual content and sexual innuendos, but they made the song work in a very catchy, almost power metal vibe to it. Also has a heavy riff, heavy and faster tempos in this song. So it gives it almost a really, a really cool finish uh, power metal sound and vibe to this song. I really like it. Uh, and it has a cool solo, which it doesn't hurt. One of the cooler solos in the album is, is in this song, in my opinion. I really like the way the solo came across in this, in this song because it didn't break the song, but it allowed the song to continue to flow because it added to the, to the melody that already existed in the song. And another aspect that I must say throughout the whole album is the keyboards. I really like how they use the keyboards. They use it more they don't use it just for melody, but they use it also to set a certain scenario, to set to set a certain aura and atmosphere to the song in terms of what the lyrics are going to give you. The keyboards are really used uh, in and out in songs, but they're really used to me more as a backdrop than they are as a melodic uh, instrument. And I really like how they did that in the album. So overall, this is Lordy's Sexorcism out right now on AFM Records. Let me know your thoughts about the band, the album, in the comment section below. I'll be reading those and replying. I'm really looking forward to see what you guys have to say about this album. I enjoy it, but like I said, this is really a grower, not a shower. But this is a solid album. It's a good album. Uh, you know, it was enjoyable. It was an enjoyable experience to listen to this album. It was fun. I laughed as I listened to the music, as I, as I listened to the lyrics. They make you laugh. They make you smile. And at the end of the day, isn't that what music is supposed to be all about? I don't know. You guys tell me in the comment section. Take care, guys.